Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, we discovered a brand new healer for our tribe. Little Sienna was wandering around the darkness of the jungle, trying her best to get to all of her healing fruits. It seems like she probably lives inside this clearing. Maybe this was even where her family used to call home before they all mysteriously vanished. I think she's trying her best to uphold their ways, despite how young she was when we first found her. And of course, despite the thick jungle heat, which is never too kind to our creatures with a toxic body. She is so many different rarities all rolled up into one though. She even has the immunity gene J, which is apparently pretty hard to come by. So we'll have to see if we can maybe weasel that into our tribe too. Maybe she'll even be one of the creatures who sails away with us to the next island once we find the rest of those blocking roots. We took care of two more in the last episode, so that means we should only need to destroy two more now. We have one over here inside this clearing, and then it's up to somebody sniffing one out in some other part of the jungle. We've been pretty lucky with them so far though, so hopefully this will be the day. Maybe our brave explorers can even do that for us. But at least with Sienna inside our tribe now, she can take a little bit of the load off of Apricot, who was previously the only one who could heal our creatures with her purring. She has enough on her plate anyways. She needs to heal Needle next. This ambitious creature was the one who tore away at the thorns right underneath the oak tree which really helped out our tribe quite a bit, because now Takir can pick up even more food than he could before. The only problem is it took off so much of our lifespan, so we're going to see if Apricot's healing magic will be just what she needs to feel better. We'll have her scoot on over to the healer's stump, and then we'll have to have Takir do the same. He has also contracted a little bit of an illness from Lionheart, and for that matter, Lionheart himself is getting dangerously close to the end of his lifespan too. I feel like he may have gotten caught up in himself a little bit, caught up in the adventure with Needle, and he probably doesn't want her to know that he's so sick, because it would be a little bit embarrassing, especially if she knew that he was giving it to other tribe mates too. So as she's about to be healed by Apricot, I think he's going to try his best to sneak away. We'll bring him around all of these thick weeds, right next to his mother, so he can munch on some of the old healing fruits that the healers used to take care of. Now she is going to be quite shocked to see him. She is probably going to be a little bit angry too. How could he allow himself to get so distracted that he nearly passed away in some distant part of the jungle? She probably feels like she's really out of the loop right now. Both of her sons, her adopted son and her true blood son, have both gotten away from her, so she doesn't really know what's going on in their lives. So this would be a good chance for them to catch up at least. Lionheart can tell her about Needle and how he really, really wants to impress her somehow, and I think that would definitely soften her views. She has also been swept away by the feeling of adventure before, and she misses Snapdragon dearly. So maybe she'll try to urge her son to talk to Needle a bit more openly. There's no need to hide something so important from her, and if they are truly meant to be together, then surely she would understand. But this will give Dagger the chance to hear about his daughter too, so we'll have him start making his way down the path as well. That way, he can reunite with both Needle and Cadence, and maybe even think about passing those bluebird feathers soon. Or the bluebird feather, rather. Just one from his side of the family. He needs to share the stories of Adam, and he needs to make sure that Cadence is finding a good place to settle down the remains of her mother. For that matter, let's have Takir come over here, so he can gobble up this healing fruit too. I feel like Apricot would request it. She knows that he's getting quite a bit weaker in his old age, so just to be sure that nothing terrible is going to happen overnight, she would like to see him use one of the medicines first. Let's bring Cadence to the healer's stump as well. She can unbury that root, and then she'll get the chance to experience the healing magic of Apricot as well. 
So now all of these creatures are going to heal a little bit of their damage every single day. Eventually, Needle will be feeling back to her old self. And if Takir ends up taking any extra damage from any pesky colds, then he should be just fine too. And that means Cadence is probably feeling quite invigorated as well. But let's have Needle start making her way back toward the tree. Because despite the fact that she was just injured, I feel like she'd want to get back to work. Maybe this is even her way of looking for Lionheart? She knows that he's super sneaky, so maybe she thinks that he's just hiding in the tall grass. We'll have to see if she can track him down later. I'm sure he'll be right back next to her side before long. Now as for these two, I think I'm actually going to start a family between them. We know that Apricot loved Takira's singing, of course, and Takira's getting so close to the end of his lifespan. And of course, we know that he always wanted a little family. He had assumed that Solaris gave up on him, or he just wasn't interested in his offerings. But we know otherwise. There wasn't any new blood to invite to the tribe, but that was because Aprica already had her eyes on him. So I placed the person out into both of those slots, so we'll hopefully see some more little healers born. But aside from that, I would like to make sure that we start mutating the black fur onto their babies too. That'll ensure that our healers can sneak around undetected by the apes. I'd love to see some markings get passed on to their babies as well. And I'm sure that Takir would love it too. To know that his namesake is watching out for their babies. So we'll place something a little bit different into her second slot as well. And we'll see if they have any luck. So why don't you go ahead and breed with him? There we go, and then we'll scoot you right into this nest. Luckily, nobody is too close right now, so she shouldn't have to worry about getting anyone sick. But she is going to have to seek out some more healing fruits for her own use. We figure that healing so many sick tribe mates is just taking a toll on her life. And that's why her lifespan is cut in half. But let's go back to Rose Quartz because her situation is similar to Cadence's. She's looking for a place to settle down the remains of both of her parents. Now that she can finally see her father's, right inside those mud patches that he loves so much. Honestly, there was no better place for him to pass. We're going to see if her brother and Shark can help her find those roots. Luckily, it would appear that we have one right by the ocean. That's actually the perfect place for us to bury Honeydew. He did really miss diving into those ocean waves. We'll just have Mango munch on one of the healing fruits as well. That way he'll be feeling nice and invigorated too, and ready to start carving that pathway straight over to the roots. And then last but not least, we have our flighty little birds and our brand new doctor. I think she actually enjoys their company more than she's letting on. She strikes me as somebody who would probably be quite stoic. She'd be very distant, she wouldn't talk very much, but she does really love hearing the pitter-patter of feet other than her own. She appreciates that her healer's grove is full of life again. So I don't think she would mind if we stay here for a little while. And aside from that, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if we started a family here too. It seems safe enough. We have plenty of food to eat and we have the healing fruits, and there isn't an ape in sight. So let's see if we can find a good place to settle down a nest. Honestly, I suppose right here would be fine because that gives Sunrose access to plenty of food. So let's scoot Rovanu over here and then set up their mutation menus. I actually want to do something a little bit different with this family. One of you came up with a really, really clever way of bringing the poison fangs out of their genetics. We'll want to place this now into Rovanu's mutation menu that the poison fangs can dominate. So I believe both the gills and the platypus beak should be recessive to the poison fangs. And if I had to choose between them, I think we're going to go with the platypus beak instead. I wouldn't mind seeing that on our babies, and it would at least give us an extra way to collect some food, which we do so desperately need. Maybe not on this island, but sometime in the future. And then as for Sunrose, we're going to leave the snout jeans totally untouched. Instead, we'll place those all-important stripes on her babies. And maybe the nimble fingers, too. 
I feel like we need another family with those nimble fingers, just as kind of a failsafe. So we'll see if she can mutate that onto some of her children. Basically, the hope is, is that she's going to pass the poison fangs, and he's going to mutate the platypus beak. Then we'll see if that gives us the poison fanged babies that we've been longing for. I know a lot of you have been missing them, so fingers crossed that this works. For now, we might as well have both of these creatures gather from the red fruits. Since they won't have quite enough energy to lick off the juices of the stinky fruits on this turn, we want to be super careful. We don't know what's wandering out in the darkness by the ports. And if I had to guess, I would say the apes are probably up here waiting for us. So we don't need to attract them to our clearings before we make our babies strong. But I think that should be the end of this turn. So let's return straight back to Rovani's baby to see if hopefully our plan is going to work. Oh my gosh, on our first try? Oh my gosh, you guys, the poison fangs are back. Oh, and he looks so cute. He almost looks just like his grandmother. Oh, that is too perfect. Grandmother Rila, I think they might actually have the same stripes. Oh my goodness. And he has the nimble fingers as well. So that means if we are truly going to a swamp island next, he should be able to gather us so much food. We are going to be rolling in poison fangs. Yeah, so the platypus beak worked. That made it so it pushed the poison fangs straight to the front. So we really lucked out that time. And he even has the home island gene. Not to mention he has the most adorable name ever. Little Tanunu. Yeah, I think Adam is definitely proud of you guys. He's proud of you for coming up with innovative ways to push our tribe forward. So on the flip side, let's go back to the other side of the island. Make sure there's no danger out here, of course, aside from those carnivorous plants. So far, so good. At least there's no apes for you to worry about. And it looks like we did have another person out, baby. Oh my gosh. She is so precious. Oh, and she has her father's nimble fingers. I mean, she almost looks just like her mother, Apricot. But just with some slightly darker spots, which I know Takira's probably so happy to see. And his nimble fingers, too. So we can teach her how to crack open the acorns for Solaris. Since she does look so much like her mother, we'll definitely have to keep up with the fruit theme. So I think we'll actually name this little baby Peach. She almost looks like a tiny little peach to me. She is absolutely adorable. And she's not sick, so that's going to make her a bit of a more effective healer. But that also means that she's not going to want to settle down next to her mother. I think it's probably high time that she returned to one of the healing fruits anyways, before she ends up passing from her own sickness. So maybe we can request that Takir comes back to watch after his baby. We'll have him gather up as many of these stinky fruits as he can possibly carry, and then scoot right next to the nest. So she'll have time to do a bit of wandering, straight back to her old home. This was where she first learned how to use her healing magic, so I'm sure it's going to be quite nostalgic for her. The only problem is, when she finally settles down for the night, her siblings are going to be long gone. So I'm sure she'll be a little bit worried, wondering where they may have run off to. But they have a different job to perform. A different task. It actually looks like there's two roots over here. Oh, maybe we could bury their parents side by side? I'm sure Rose Quartz would appreciate that. But Mango is going to have to tear his way through the grass before she can get to them. We'll have her scoot up here. And then Mango can skitter off to the side. Because we don't want him spreading his cold, of course. But on the next turn, we should be able to get to those roots, and then her mission will be complete. Her first mission anyways. If there's one thing that we've learned on these islands, it's that the jungle can be a very, very ruthless place. So I think it's time that Rarasi nudges Lionheart back to the rest of the tribe. We'll have her stay here next to the stinky fruits. I think she'll be okay, honestly. I mean, we haven't seen a single ape out here, so I don't think she's going to be attracting any attention. 
we won't have to waste Lionheart's turns on licking the juices. Instead, we can focus on bringing him straight back to Needle's side, because I think it's high time that he admitted his feelings to her. He's been trying so hard to impress her over these past days, probably overcompensating for the common cold that he has. But in all honesty, he never even had to try. He caught her eye the moment that he stumbled into her over by those red fruits. So I think she would be more than willing to start a family with him. They just need to find a safe place to do so, because goodness knows there are enough dangers on this part of the island. Maybe if we're lucky, they can stumble into another one of those permanent nests. But for now, let's just set up their mutation menus so we can have them breed before they leave. I guess for Needle, we'll try to keep the bear Uniclaw on her. Hopefully that'll pass over the deformed paw that she has, because we want to try to keep that off of as many babies as possible. Then we'll try to work the ram horns back onto their babies too, just for the extra little boost of strength. And as for Lionheart, if we can keep those sneaky genes in your line, that would be perfect as well. He was, after all, the son of the most brave adventurers in all the land. It's actually kind of funny, because Lionheart has kind of come full circle here. Now he's making a brand new safe haven in the middle of the jungle, safe for the rest of his tribe to use. He's trying his best anyway, and I'm sure that Needle is going to be an excellent help if her big bear Yina Claw is any indication. So go ahead and breed with her. Hopefully. We don't want her settling down too close. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to scoot her away. So maybe we'll see if she can find any nests out here. Well, there are more of those healing fruits, so that's a good sign. And still no apes to be found. So fingers crossed it's going to stay that way so you guys can start your family on the next turn. Now as for you, Cadence, I'm pretty sure there are more roots out here. Yeah, looks like if you scoot on over this way, you should be able to dig up some for your father, who I'm sure would appreciate the extra meal. Yeah, let's bring him over to Cadence, so he can help clear out the path. Oh, and he found a nest for his daughter? Oh, isn't that sweet? So he must really value the relationship between them, I guess. He approves, at least. Lionheart must feel very, very proud of himself. It must have been when he overheard him talking about his daughter. He can tell that Lionheart really cares about her, and that's all that matters in the end. I feel like that's probably the message that he's going to try to instill in them. Their journey has always been about returning Adam's family to his old home. So above all else, they are a family unit. They need to stick together. Not like those flighty birds off in the north, who are more concerned with their unique treasures. We had such good luck here, though. I wonder if maybe we could have another Poison Fang baby between them. Let's scoot Sunrose over here. We'll have her breed with him, I guess. Hopefully. Oh no, this time it didn't work. I think their fertility is okay, though. I mean, his is a little bit low, so we'll have to be careful with that, too. But it might just be our ancestors warning us that we don't exactly have the food supplies to support this many babies. So maybe you guys will have to wait for a couple more days. And instead we'll focus on gathering the food that we need. Let's bring Sienna to a different bush if we can. Oh, we have another one over here. Excellent. Of course she would know exactly where the best food sources are. Because this is her home and she's more than happy to share with the new babies. She is probably living right now. She doesn't want to admit it, but she's super, super happy that these creatures joined her. I guess we'll probably have Rarasi stay right here. I suppose we could move her a little bit further away, but honestly, I would rather give her the chance to collect more stinky fruits before she passes. So we'll zoom out, we'll skip the turn, and we'll keep an eye on all the darkness. So far, so good. It doesn't look like you attracted an ape after all. Okay, thank goodness. Everything is still as quiet as can be. So this is actually going to be her last day. I'm not really sure if she has time to gather a healing fruit. 
We want to save this one for Africa after all, because she is getting so, so wounded. That illness really takes a lot out of her. And this is going to be our last chance to have another baby, but I don't think she can return in time. Honestly, though, I think that's okay. We already have an excellent daughter in Peach, and she's going to be able to take care of everything I ever hoped for for this family. She can't really do much right now, since she can't go very far from the nest. But we can at least have Takir pick up the grass in the area, so it should make it much easier for Needle to get to her new nest too. Should we allow her to use this one for now? I mean, I know her father just found this excellent permanent nest over by the healing fruits. But honestly, I feel like we'll want to have a baby quickly, because Lionheart is so sick too. So let's bring her down here. We'll have him breed with her. There we go, that time it worked. You know, I think she can actually scoot on into this one. So that means she'll be right next to her father's side as he passes away today. And as he hands his bluebird feather over to Cadence. He has high hopes for the sneaky little gravedigger. He's already seen firsthand just how ambitious she can be. Just how dedicated she is to the task seeking out those roots to set the remains of her tribe mates to rest. And what would be a better way to prove her dedication to the family in general? Dagger knows that she's going to keep all of her family close, and that's really all that he ever could have wished for. I don't think I ever changed their ranks over to alphas, unfortunately. So Cadence is going to be the first one. And then we'll scoot on over here to Rovanu to make sure that he's an alpha too. It doesn't really change much gameplay-wise since we're not banishing creatures, but it feels more official this way. Now before we end up the episode, let's see if maybe Rose Quartz can bury her parents too. We'll scoot her on over to this room, where she can bury her father. Oh, is that another one of those blocking roots? Wait a second. I think it is. Oh my gosh. Are they going to find those last two then? Wait a second, Mango. Let's see if you can tear away at the grass. We'll have Shark scoot up here. You can scoot past him. Yes! It is another one of those blocking roots. Now is there any danger around here? Oh thank goodness. It looks like everything is safe. Well I think I'm going to scoot you over here since we don't want you getting Shark sick. But it looks like on the next turn, you guys are going to get us one step closer to completing this island. And he even found a very strategically placed nest too. I wonder if we're going to be able to make use of that in the next episode as well. Something tells me that Shark and Rose Quartz would be interested in settling down. Especially since it's so close to the water. So their babies can be born listening to the soothing sound of the ocean waves. It'll give them a sense of curiosity, I'm sure. A sense of adventure, even. Hoping to find a way to explore the ocean themselves one day, just like their ancestors used to. We might as well just gather the extra food, too, just like we were planning. Grab a couple more of these stinky fruits off the fruit tree. We'll have Rovanu lick the juices this time, since we don't really know what danger is hiding out here. Let's have him scoot to the side of his baby. Maybe he could even roll around in the mud to disguise his scent. That way he can keep an eye on the darkness as well, because of this little poison fanged prince is going nowhere. We want to make sure that he is the most protected member of our entire family. So let's go ahead and skip the day one last time, just to watch as dagger passes, and to see what his first grandchild is going to look like. Oh my goodness! Look at this baby! Oh, it was even more magical with the purring sparkles floating from her mother. She is gorgeous. Unfortunately, it does seem as if she was cursed with her mother's no paw. But in a way, that's kind of fitting. If you guys remember way back when the game first came out, Adam actually used to have a no paw too. So they might not have the poison fangs on their side, but it almost seems like they're returning to their roots anyways. Now, as far as her name goes, maybe you guys can help me out. I definitely want to keep along the same theme as her father. We have a Lionheart, 
We have a Wolfsbane. One of you suggested the name Foxtrot for one of their babies, which I definitely want to use for this family, but she doesn't really look like a Foxtrot to me. So if you guys have any ideas that would fit that theme too, then do let me know. And in the next episode, we'll give her her own name too. Maybe it could even be something to remember her grandfather by. You guys always come up with the most clever names, so I'm sure we'll find something good. And with those final two blocking roots visible to us now, she might even be one of the creatures who moves on to the next Swamp Island. There aren't too many ports for us to choose from, so it will be a very difficult decision. But I'm looking forward to leaving this jungle behind us, as long as the apes don't get in our way. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!